brothers and sisters, welcome to day 20. And the theme today is love rearranges our priorities. Brothers and sisters, don't forget to keep having the discussion groups. If you haven't had one yet, it's not too late to start one and gather friends and family to discuss the books. Bring up the conversations in family gatherings and meetings. Let's have a national conversation about the Lord and especially about the way he comes to us in the Most Holy Eucharist. Today's theme is so important and it's a bit of a challenge for us. But is the Lord Jesus a priority in our life? And this is an honest question we have to ask ourselves every day. Is God first? And why should God be first? Well, it's just just because nobody has loved us. Nobody has been so kind to us. Nobody has been so loving to us. Nobody has done for us as what God has done for us. So it, it, out of justice, we owe God just by being merely creatures that He created us. We owe our existence to Him. He continues to uphold us in existence. Everything is just gift. You know, our freedom is a gift. Our ability to think like Him and to create with Him is a gift. All these things. And so Matthew Kelly challenges us today on today's theme, you know, love rearranges our priorities. And yesterday we spoke about how we should celebrate the Mass as if it was our only Mass. I just want to give you a quote by St. Claude de la Colombière, which was the great spiritual director to St. Margaret Mary, who Jesus as the Sacred Heart appeared to her and gave her the Sacred Heart devotion for the whole church to remind the church of his incredible love. And St. Claude says, God is more honored by a single Mass than he could be by all the actions of angels and men together however fervent and heroic they might be, if we only knew the treasure we hold in our hands in the Holy Mass. God is more honored by a single Mass than, than anything else. And this is why we should put the Holy Mass as a priority in our life. You know, Matthew Kelly speaks about in his own life, when he was challenged by his own spiritual director to, to give a bit of time every day, 15 minutes reading the Gospel, maybe going to Mass a bit more. How can we give our life more to Jesus in the Most Holy Eucharist? How can we put the Holy Mass, the center of our faith, at the center of our very life? You know, what we love, brothers and sisters, determines who we are. So we could look at our life and the things that we love, and we will get a sense about the people that we are. And sometimes that's a bit scary, because, you know, people could see who we are by the things we love, by, by where we have decided to commit our desires to. And it's not easy. Um, and often too, there's the reality that as St. Paul says, that we end up doing the things that we hate to sometimes. We, don't, we do things because of the addictions that drive us, they're bad habits that have formed us, you know, that we give in to. But we do believe that Jesus has the power and the grace to free us from those things. But we need to try to put God first. You know, we need to make this sacrifice. We spoke a few days ago about sacrifice. Well, Jesus has given his life to us in the Eucharist. Well, we ought to learn how to sacrifice ourselves and our lives to, to find Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, to spend time with him. When we do that, it's a game changer, brothers and sisters. It's an absolute great game changer. We do not want to live spiritually mediocre lives. Do you? Do you want to be a mediocre Christian or do you want to become a saint? a man and a woman fully alive in the glory of God. This life is passing away, it's fading, it's, 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 it's temporal. We are being prepared for an eternal life, for eternity. What we do on earth echoes into eternity. We said that a couple days ago. So we need to put the priority right. What are you going to do, brothers and sisters? What resolution are you going to make? And are you going to ask somebody to hold you accountable to that resolution? That's really important. We can make a lot of private resolutions in our heart, but we need to have good friends, spiritual friends, who want to see us flourish in God, and ask them to hold you accountable, to hold me accountable to this resolution that we're going to make, to reorder our life so that, that the Lord is first. Because when the Lord Jesus is first, brothers and sisters, there is a difference. Our life is different. And I said that already in the first week of, of our discussions. The Lord is first. And things flow in an incredible way. I want to read you a quote by uh, a, a famous Jesuit 
it, it, it's really tremendous. It's, it's one of those quotes that, that have been quoted again and again. And, 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 it, and it goes like this. He says, nothing is more practical than finding God. That is, than falling in love in a quite absolute final way. So nothing is more practical than that, than falling in love with God. See, prayer, prayer is one of the most practical things you could ever do to change your life and change the world and change your home around you. And especially prayer in the presence of Jesus in the tabernacle. Prayer in, in the presence of the blessed sacrament. So Father Pedro Arupe says, what you are in love with, what seizes your imagination will affect everything. It will decide what will get you out of bed in the mornings, what you will do with your evenings, how you spend your weekends, what you read, who you know, what breaks your heart, and what amazes you with joy and gratitude. Fall in love, stay in love, and it will decide everything. Brothers and sisters, I pray that the Lord give us all a deeper love for Him, to stay more in love with Him so that we could decide our lives in view of Him, especially the way He comes to us in the Holy Eucharist. May the Lord bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.